Greetings, brothers and sisters in the Lord, to all the good citizens of the ambassadors of the Christian faith, and to all of our viewers. Welcome to week 21 of our oral Bible reading. Let us begin in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you. You are God and you are good. You are great. Praise you, Lord, and thank you for all of these miracle signs and wonders. As we search through the scriptures each week with our oral Bible reading, without flipping through the pages, lead us and guide us, O Lord, by your helper, the Holy Spirit, through the scriptures, the authoritative word of God, the Bible. And God bless all my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Lord, please keep us all well. And make our healing complete. And provide for our needs. In Jesus' name, amen. This week's message is salvation. Your God, whom you constantly serve, will himself deliver you. And our reference scriptures for the week are Isaiah 56, 1, 2. So let us turn in our Bibles to Isaiah 56, 1 and 2. I think I've got it right about here. And no, I don't. But behold, miracles, signs, and wonders still do exist because we're at Ezekiel chapter. In the uh, introduction page, there's two pages, three pages. Chapter one is right there. We've seen these week after week. Miracles, signs, and wonders. So Isaiah 56, 1 and 2. Isaiah 56, 1 and 2. Be sure you write your scriptures down, your reference scriptures, and the scriptures you find while searching through the Bible using the method that we use. Thus says the Lord, preserve justice and do righteousness, for my salvation is about to come, and my righteousness will be revealed. How blessed is the man who does this, and the Son of Man who takes hold of it, who keeps from profaning the Sabbath, and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Okay, our next reference scripture is Jeremiah 6, 9 and 10 and 16. Let us turn in our Bibles to Jeremiah 6, 9, 10, and 16. Thus says the Lord of hosts, They will thoroughly glean as the vine the remnant of Israel. Pass your hand again like a grape gatherer over the branches. To whom shall I speak and give warning, that they may hear? Behold, their ears are closed, and they cannot listen. Behold, the word of the Lord has become a reproach to them. They have no delight in it. Thus says the Lord, stand by the ways and see, and ask for the ancient paths, where the good way is, and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. I did a search on the internet for the, for the definition of glean is to gather grain left by reapers and to collect little by little with patient effort. Okay, our third reference scripture is Daniel chapter 6, verses 10 through 12 and 27. Let's turn on our Bibles to Daniel chapter 6. There we are again at Ezekiel, the same page. 
introduction page, and we need Daniel. And there we are, chapter 7, chapter 6, 10 through 12, and 27. Now, when Daniel knew that the document was signed, he entered his house, now in his roof chamber. He had no windows open toward Jerusalem. And he continued kneeling on his knees three times a day, praying and giving thanks before his God, as he had been doing previously. Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petition and supplication before his God. Then they approached and spoke before the king about the king's injunction. Did you not sign an injunction? that any man who makes a petition to any god or man besides you, O king, for thirty days is to be cast into the lion's den? The king replied, The statement is true. According to the law of the Medes and Persians, which may not be revoked, He delivers and rescues and performs signs and wonders in heaven and on earth, who has also delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. Okay, that's our three reference scriptures, brothers and sisters in the Lord. So let's close our Bibles. I'd like to give a brief overview of Isaiah 56, Jeremiah 6, and Daniel 6. Isaiah 56, join yourself with the Lord to minister to him and to love the name of the Lord to be his servant, even those the Lord will bring to his holy mountain and make them joyful in his house of prayer. The Lord gathers the dispersed, yet others he will gather to his people, to those already gathered. In the Babylonian exile, the Lord did not favor Israel. And he said, They are blind watchmen, mute dogs, unable to bark, dreamers who love to slumber, greedy dogs. They have all turned to their own way. Shepherds who have no understanding, and all of them know nothing. They said, Come, let us get drunk, and tomorrow will be more like today, only more so. Jeremiah 6 The prophet says, Flee for safety from the midst of Jerusalem. Evil looks down from the north, and a great destruction. I will cut off the daughter of Zion, prepare war against her. Woe to us, they all said. For thus says the Lord of hosts, this city, Jerusalem, is to be punished. Be warned, O Jerusalem, the prophet has spoken. And he said, The Lord has given me these words, and I am full of the wrath of the Lord. Everyone is greedy for gain, and everyone deals falsely. They have healed the brokenness of my people superficially, saying, Peace, peace, but there is no peace. They were not even ashamed at all. Therefore, they shall fall among those who fall. They would not listen to my words. Hear, O earth, I am bringing disaster on this people and the fruit of their plans. Thus says the Lord. Behold, a people is coming from the north land, bringing bow and spear, and they are cruel, and have no mercy. Against you, O daughter of Zion, and terror is on every side. Daniel 6. Daniel possessed an extraordinary spirit, 
and the king of Babylon planned to appoint him over the entire kingdom. The commissioners and satraps began trying to find a ground of accusation against Daniel in regard to government affairs, but they could find no grounds to accuse him or any evidence of corruption. No negligence or corruption was found in him. So they went to King Darius as they had devised a plan. All the high officials and governors consulted together that the king should establish a statute and enforce an injunction that anyone who makes a petition to any god or man besides you, O king, for thirty days shall be cast into the lion's den. And King Darius signed the document. Daniel knew about the document, but he refused to stop giving thanks and praying before his God three times a day. Then he was discovered, and they brought Daniel before the king. The king gave orders, and Daniel was cast into the lion's den. Then the king went off to his palace, and his sleep fled from him. Then the king rose at dawn and went in haste to the lion's den. He cried out with a troubled voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God delivered you? Then Daniel spoke to the king and said, O king, live forever. My God sent his angels and shut the mouth of the lions. Then the king was very pleased and gave orders for Daniel to be taken up out of the den. He was not injured because he had trusted in his God. All the government officials who accused Daniel with their children and their wives, the king Darius, had cast into the lion's den, and before they reached the bottom of the den, the lions crushed all their bones. King Darius wrote to all the peoples, May your peace abound. All men in my kingdom are to fear and tremble before the God of Daniel. So Daniel enjoyed success in the reign of King Darius. Okay, brothers and sisters in the Lord, that's the end of this overview. Let's get your Bibles, get your pens and papers, and write down the scriptures you find to read at another time. When we turn simultaneously in our Bibles without flipping through the pages, let us begin. And I feel it right about here. I got my hand right on it. Okay. John chapter 21. Let's check our archives for John chapter 21. We've read four chapters in the Gospel of John, but not chapter 21. So let's begin at chapter 21. After these things, Jesus manifested himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and he manifested himself in this way. Simon Peter and Thomas, called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will also come with you. They went out and got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the day was now breaking, Jesus stood on the beach, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. So Jesus said to them, Children, you do not have any fish, do you? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, 
and you will find a catch. So they cast, and then they were not able to haul it in because of the great number of fish. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. So when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put his outer garment on, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from the land, about one hundred yards away, dragging the net full of fish. So when they got on the land, they saw a charcoal fire already laid, and fish placed on it, and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three, and although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples ventured to question him, Who are you, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and the fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus was manifested to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Shepherd my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to gird yourself and walk wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will gird you and bring you where you do not wish to go. Now this he said, signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, Follow me. Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them, the one who also had leaned back on his bosom at the supper and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? So Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. Therefore this saying went out among the brethren that that disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but only if I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is testifying to these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, which if they were written in detail, I suppose that even the world itself would not contain the books that would be written. Okay. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, I have really enjoyed that one, John chapter 21. And as it is, it is the last chapter in the Gospel of John. Earlier today, I did that twice. I ended up at 
Matthew 28 and Luke 24, and now John 21 this morning, you could write those scriptures down. Perhaps that's a sign. Salvation for us all. Okay, now we're going to go back this way. And I'm hoping to find Matthew, which I did. I really like the Beatitudes, but we didn't land there. We landed on Matthew chapter 13. Maybe that's a sign, or maybe I'm just pretty good at figuring out where they are and the, the books are in the Bible. Let's, let us check our archives. We have only read Matthew 27, so let us begin at Matthew chapter 13. That day Jesus went out of the house and was sitting by the sea, and large crowds gathered to him. So he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd was standing on the beach. And he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on the rocky places where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up because they had no depth of soil. But when the sun had risen, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Others fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them out. And others fell on the good soil and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? Jesus answered them, To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. For whoever has to him more shall be given, and he will have an abundance. But whoever does not have even what he has shall be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because while seeing they do not see, and while hearing they do not hear nor do they understand. In their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled, which says, You will keep on hearing, but will not understand. You will keep on seeing, but will not perceive. For the heart of this people has become dull. With their ears they scarcely hear, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they would see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and return, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. For truly I say to you, that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see, and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the one on whom seed was sown beside the road. The one on whom the seed was sown on the rocky places, this is the man who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no firm root in himself, but is only temporary. And when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he falls away. And the one on whom seed was sown among the thorns, this is the man who hears the word and the worry of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth 
choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. And the one on whom seed was sown on the good soil, this is the man who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and brings forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Jesus presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went away. But when the wheat sprouted and bore grain, then the tares became evident also. The slaves of the landowner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, for while you are gathering up the tares, you may uproot the wheat with them. Allow both to grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather up the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them up. But gather the wheat into my barn. He presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. And this is smaller than all other seeds. But when it is full grown, it is larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. He spoke another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three pecks of flour until it was all leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables, and he did not speak to them without a parable. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the foundation of the world. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. And he said, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man, and the field is the world. And as for the good seed, these are the sons of the kingdom, and the tares are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil, and the harvest is the end of age, and the reapers are angels. So just as the tares are gathered up and burned with fire, so shall it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send forth his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all stumbling blocks and those who commit lawlessness, and will throw them into the furnace of fire. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid again. And from joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. And upon finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea and gathering fish of every kind. And when it was filled, they drew it up on the beach, and they sat down and gathered the good fish into containers, but the bad they threw away. So it will be at the end of the age. 
the angels will, will come forth and take out the wicked from among the righteous and will throw them into the furnace of fire. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They said to him, Yes. And Jesus said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has become a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like a head of a household who brings out of his treasure things new and old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he departed from there. He came to his hometown and began teaching them in their synagogue, so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get his wisdom and these miraculous powers? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him, but Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and in his own household. And he did not do many miracles there because of their unbelief. Okay, I think that tells us something. Waves of wrath, uh, gleaning the vine and tares and things of this nature and the kingdom of heaven and all the good things Daniel did. Thank God, God delivered him from the mouth of the lions in the lion's den. Okay, I think we've run out of time actually this week. And so, brothers and sisters in the Lord, God bless you all. Let us end in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of our oral Bible reading, and God bless you, all my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I pray you keep us all well, Lord. Provide for our needs complete healing. Lord, and let there be peace, joyful peace, enjoy our peace, and refreshing rest, Lord, and in each other, and have good conduct among us all, and Lord, praise you and bless you and thank you, God bless all of God's people everywhere, and bless you all this day, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all.